Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome to another exciting edition of MacBreak Studio. I'm here in the studio with Mark Spencer and myself, Steve Martin, I'm here at Petaluma at Pixel Core, and we're going to look at more motion stuff. More motion stuff. But this is... Yeah paint and images and yeah. brushes. We're going to make a custom brush today, right? Yes. Our, our theme in general is, uh, is, is shapes and paint strokes and masks right. and motion. And um, you can, What you can do a you, lot with. I mean... It's, it just goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And what we're going to start with, if I just select this uh, paint stroke tool, let me just see, you can see it right there, paint stroke tool. I'm not actually going to use it, but I'm selecting it because the heads up display has this thing called shape styles. And if I click this pop-up menu, it shows all of these different shape styles that you can paint with in motion. So these are some abstract They're things. They're built into the library. Built They're into built motion. into the library. So these, these flora, all these different like, flora, leaves bana. and stuff, garnishes, light streaks, uh, liquids, textures, and there's, there's a lot. And you go into some of these, there's just a lot of different things that you can paint with. Now the thing is you can make your own, okay? Because so they're just these, made out of shapes, correct? Well, they can be made out of um, graphics. They can be made out of movies. And that's what I'm going to show you is how you can make your own out of your own movie. Oh, that's I great. I had no idea you could even make one out of a movie. Well, for instance, this thing called Brushes Floral Pack is something that, that I made that is part of the, the Shapes tutorial that, that we ship with it. It's also, you can, you can buy it independently, but it, it includes all of these different uh, leaves and flowers from around Northern California. And I want to show how I made these. So you can, you know, you can select one of these and then actually paint uh, with those leaves or flowers, so cool. which is really cool. Um, and there's really a, cool. Bunch of, a bunch of blossoms there. Yeah. That might look a little better well, if we turn the background is, off. Contrast is, there we go. Yeah, so now you can really see those. So I'm actually painting with blossoms. But I want to show the process because okay. I think people, you know, if you know a little photography or scan or whatever, you can really make your own stuff very personal. So what I did is I gathered a bunch of leaves from around uh, Northern California, and I either scanned them, like here's a scan I did of a bunch of leaves, uh, or I took photographs and then cut them out in Photoshop. Right. Okay. So what I ended up with, uh, in, in each case, for this particular leaf, which I don't know the name of, but um, here I'm going to tap through it. These are three copies of this one leaf, okay? Because what I'm actually going to do is make a brush that is a small movie that has just three separate images. So when I paint, it doesn't paint the same leaf over and over again. Paints one of those three leaves. One of these three. Right. Yeah, and it could be six or seven or 10 or 12, but I just want to do a simple example here. Pretty neat. One thing to notice if you look when I, when I sort of tab three the, through these is the stem is in the same location with yes. each of them. I line them up so you, the stems by match. Design. By design. Yeah. So that the stems could be, look like they're attached to okay. something. So the process is, number one, to scan something or shoot something. Mm -hmm. Number two, to s separate them so they're on transparent backgrounds. So each of these has an alpha can channel or mm -hmm. transparency, right? Right. And then, this is the cool part. So, so those have, all have transparency. Yeah, they all right? have trans, okay. those are transparent backgrounds. So they're Got saved it. as PNGs. Got it. With transparent backgrounds. Now, the trick here is you want to use QuickTime 7 to do this, ah, okay? You, the you, venerable QuickTime 7 yes. we all cannot live without. We cannot live without, yes. Apple, please keep QuickTime 7 so around. So QuickTime yeah. 10 can't do this. That's the current version. Right. But if you have, a f do you get QuickTime 7 automatically with Final Cut Pro 10? Final Cut 7. I know, Final 7 Cut you 7. did. No, you don't, yeah. I don't, no. So get a hold of QuickTime 7. Um, let us know if you have trouble. We'll <laughs> figure out. I just have it because of going through so many iterations of, of Final Cut Pro. So under the file menu here in 7, there's an option to open an image sequence. That's what you can't do in QuickTime 10. So I'm going to choose that. And then an image sequence is any uh, selection of images that have sequential numbers. Like 001, 002, 003, or even A, B, C, D. Exactly. So these are leaf 01, 02, 03. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to select leaf 1. And what uh, QuickTime does is it's going to open those three as a movie. And it asks me to select a frame rate. I don't care about the frame rate here. Right. So I'm just going to say OK to 30 frames per second. And now here's a movie, and it might look weird. Like, look it at looks all this. It's really weird. Look at all this crazy. If I play it, you can see it's a very short movie. But the alpha data is still stored in that movie. The alpha channel is stored. You might think, oh my God, it's ruined. What's all this blocky, crazy stuff? And my answer is, I don't know what it is, but it, it, it goes away when you're done. Awesome. So the trick here is that you want to then um, save this. You want to export it with transparency. Okay? Right. So one option is to export it as ProRes uh, 4x4. 
So you go into your options and you can choose here I've got or Apple Pro the Store animation codec. Or the animation codec. The key is to have the depth set to millions of dollars of millions of dollars. Right, okay. Millions of dollars plus. Okay. Got it. <laughs> millions of colors plus for the Alpha channel. So I'm not going to do it here, but um, that, that's all you do. And then what you end up with, I'll go back into motion and let me delete uh, the guy I've got in there. Uh, you end up with this guy. So if I double click him, oh, I see. Still there's the weird. same thing. There's just looping right. it. Right. Still looks weird, but it actually doesn't look weird there. It does in the preview look a little weird. Right. But um, if we bring it into the project, it looks fine. Yes. In fact, if we hit Shift T, whoops, let me make the canvas active. Shift T. Shift T. Oh, you, there it is. There's a transparency, right? So now we have this little movie of uh, three frames long that we can paint with. So like, okay, so how do I actually paint with it? Exactly. You know? And notice I also made this, this is like 500 by 500, I think, something like that, 500 pixels. You don't want it to be 1920 by 1080, because right. it's, you uh, know, you're going to have hundreds of these. Plus it eats up RAM in motion, too. Oh, yeah, big time, big time. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to use the paintbrush tool. I'm just going to use the Bezier tool right down here to draw a little line of some kind. And um, I'll hit Escape. And change it to a, a now. Where did my line go? Yeah, where did it go? I, that's weird. I, I hit escape, and it actually really did escape. So um, actually, let me just make a circle. I'm going to make a circle, but you could draw a line here. I'm going to hit uh, escape to get out of that tool. Change it to an outline with no fill. Oh, yeah. And now you're like, well, how do I get the leaf in there? So here's the thing. Um, I need to go to the inspector, and then for the style. The brush type is a solid line right now. So it's making okay. that white line right yeah. now. Yeah, but I can change uh, it to an airbrush, which will go into detail in the tutorial, or an image. Image. Now, image, you might think it just has to be an image. In fact, there's the, it says brush source. We need to put something in there. It could be a movie. It can be a movie. Okay. That's Got the it. cool thing. That is the cool thing. So I'm gonna take this movie and drag it in that well. And now all of a sudden, let's actually turn off the original one. I've got copies of that leaf around that circle. Very tiny. Leaves. Very tiny. Let's increase the width. And let's also go to the stroke pane of the shape inspector, where we increase the width even more. Actually, let's go to the style pane to change the width. And you can also adjust how far spacing is. Wow. And if I can put them really close together, kind of, really of a really beautiful abstract pattern out of that, right? Yep. Um, nice. A few of the things while we're here is um, I can really change. Right now, it says play frame. So if I were to play this, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a three frame cycle is yeah, why three, it's doing that. It's just doing that. So I'm going to turn off play frames and instead I'm going to turn on uh, random start frame. Okay, so now each time uh, one of these leaves gets drawn, these are called dabs when right. you draw with paint, each one it's picking at random from that movie. So now we have sort of a more random look to those leaves. Um, we can also go into the stroke pane and do a lot more with this and this is really uh, where you can go crazy with your creativity. You can just say we're going to align the, the angle of these to the stroke, so they align to the stroke, and then we can change that angle so they all face in or they all face out, or they all go around in a circle like that. And then we could also say add a little jitter, which moves them off the line so they're not so perfect. That's okay, really so jitter kind of spreads yeah. them out but keeps them on that path. And that path is still editable. If you right click on it and choose edit points, you can still adjust this path. Follow, uh, just like it, the car we looked at a any, couple episodes back. Yeah, in any, in any way that you want, you can still adjust it. So um, a huge amount of flexibility to create your own paintbrushes by wow. using movies or graphics. Graphics or movies, you could just paint with them because they're essentially objects that you're dropping into a well and yep. that's, that's pretty amazing. So you can actually learn all about shapes in your latest tutorial, right? Yeah, so mastering shapes, paint strokes in motion, shapes, paint strokes, and masks. And masks. So masks are actually very much right. like shapes in motion, in motion 5. We'll cover all this. Plus adding, uh, working in 3D, because these paint strokes, let me just throw a camera in, because I always got to do one more thing. You have to throw a camera in there. Now I'm going to throw a camera in, I'm going to take these paint strokes, and back in the stroke pane, I'm going to turn on local 3D and face camera. Just to show you that if I now animate this camera around, Oh, wow, it's those got guys depth. Will, yeah. It's got depth, if I miss it, zoom in a little bit. Um, those are actually turning to face the camera, and they look like there's some it's depth to those flat, things It's not just flat, like a card in space. Right. right. It actually has some wow. 3D in there. That's so amazing stuff. Just gives you an idea of some of the possibilities you can do by... It's um, infinite. It's infinite. It's, it's, it's infinite. infinite. And a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I think it's time for us to make like a tree and leave. Sorry. 
Uh, thank you for watching for another episode, another episode of Mac Big Street, Mac Break Studio. We'll see you next time.